we have a goat named Almond, and we thought she was just really fat. At first, we thought she, she was having babies, and she did. One's named Hazelnut, which is this one, and one's named Cashew, and one's named um, Pecan. All right, we just rolled the longest and thickest log that we have yet milled onto our mill. This is going to form one of the two plates at the very top of our cabin. It's 20 feet long and it's about 14 inches thick. But we have to take a break because something very exciting is happening. As we started our journey here about 10 months ago, seven months ago, another journey began which was the launch of the Perseverance Mars rover craft from Earth to Mars, and it's arriving today, 124 million miles from here. That rover is deorbiting, and the live coverage is about to start. So we're going inside for what I have dubbed the Mars party. I'm excited. Now, Perseverance's wheels are a little thicker than Curiosity's, but they're actually both made out of aluminum. Back to you. We're about uh, two or three minutes from the separation. Sweet. Cruise stage. Okay, they're landing. Well, it's still going to be. It's still going to be quite a while. Are you excited? Yeah. You almost didn't get to come. <laughs> Why did you get to come? I wrote a speech about it. You wrote a speech. <laughs> Emma said, what did you say? Who cares about, Who cares about Mars? Something Mars like that? Or space or... We were talking about um, one... I don't really remember, but I said... Just like I said that both of them were exactly the same. And I said, why? Because they're both really boring. Oh, that's right. She, she used to space think was space was boring. But then she wrote a uh, small essay including the words space is cool ten times and she was re-invited to the Mars party. <laughs> We're about 30 seconds from entry interface. Perseverance is going about 5.2 kilometers per second and is about 190 kilometers altitude above the surface of Mars. 150 kilometers from the surface of Mars. So the next step is they will separate the parachute and the, the uh, rocket powered lander will start to yes. pull down. Yes. 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 Now has radar lock on the ground. Current velocity is about 100 meters per second. 6.6 6 kilometers of the surface. It's close enough to see the ground now. Terrain and altitude navigation. So it's lower than an airplane now. 30 meters per second, altitude about 300 meters. They lowered it from a rocket crane. We're getting signals from MRO. Touchdown confirmed. Touchdown! Yeah. Oh my god, yeah! Daddy, look. I'm sweating. Daddy, I'm not, look. I didn't have anything to do with this thing. Oh my god. That's insane. These people have been working on this tune for like 10 years. Yeah. Can they make it bigger? Can push, right? push full screen. F11. Good. The target point on the map when you are ready. We are ready, OL3. Go for it. Whoa! Wow. Image 
firm perseverance off you the think surface they, of they Mars. have colored now, cameras on that thing. Nothing's deployed yet. Nothing's known as the hazard camera. Yeah, uh, this camera is made. Um, uh, you know, this happened just seconds ago. Just arrived. And uh, this is really amazing. Well, today's a miserable day. Um, it is raining, which makes everything like mucky and wet, but the snow doesn't go away, it's just mucky. But um, it's not terribly cold. It's only, I mean, I think 40 degrees maybe, and, but it's raining. A little bit of wind blowing. So we've had a little trouble with the babies keeping warm. So we have been snuggling them with some hot water bottles and ooh, a little slippery right there. Um, I just need to get in and out of the rain with the, the camera. <laughs> but um, the babies were getting really cold. So I don't feel it was too cold for regular goats out here, but just the babies being so young and so small, they couldn't regulate their temperature very well. And um, their mouths started to feel cold. When you put your finger in their mouth, it was cold inside and that's one of the signs of hypothermia. So we put hot water bottles on them, wrapped them up in a wool shawl, and we sit with them and allow them to snuggle up. And then when they seem like they wanna get up, we put them up near Almond and let them nurse. And they're doing much better at that by themselves. Um, sometimes hard to find it, but once they do, they're sucking away. So that's a good thing, because they weren't sucking before. I guess that's what happens in hypothermia. They lose their suck reflex. So we're just trying to keep them warm. And we may have to do this all night. I might bring them in the house at night. I'm not 100% sure. I hate to have them away from mama. But at this point, it's important that we keep them alive. So we'll see what the night brings. Part of our whole dream and goal and experience here is to cut our own wood for wood fires. We have gone through three different types of wood stoves, just used and antique stoves that we've purchased, uh, mostly on Craigslist, to try out in our pole barn uh, with mixed results. The latest one we got really does get very hot. It really does heat up a small area, but as we've mentioned, our pole barn is not insulated and so, or even really finished. And so the heat dissipates very quickly, but it's okay for cooking and drying clothes. But today is going to be a wood collection day to stack up our wood. We have uh, we've been able to burn a lot of our sawmill cutoffs, which we were kind of surprised about because they're quite green. But we've le what we've learned is the fire has to be really, really hot for those things to burn. But they'll burn, and it's uh, I mean, we probably put about a half a ton of, of pretty green offcuts from our mill into our stove and it works but we need to get a lot more dry high quality wood so we found this fir tree that's dead right there with the crookedy top and uh, that's coming down today that's gonna make a lot of firewood for us I'd say it's about 80 feet maybe and so we're gonna spend a bit of time breaking that up and carrying it out of the woods splitting it up and stacking it Timber. Okay, that much wood will hold us just for a couple days, but we have a lot more milling to do. 
once the tree's down, it's really a one-man job to collect all that firewood and haul it up here. My goal is to mill up 11 rafters today. My goal yesterday was to mill up five rafters and I got zero done. So hopefully today will be better. how it goes. You have a plan, you start work, something breaks. If you're gonna live out here far from town, you're gonna get good at fixing stuff yourself. There's no rocket science. You take something apart, figure out what it's supposed to do, figure out why it's not doing it anymore, figure out how to put it back. See if something's broken, needs to be replaced, or can just be kind of jimmied into place. And then you try it. And uh, usually it works. But if I had to take this to a shop or something, that could be days before I got the chainsaw back. I don't know. What do you think? Back in business. Gonna work out perfectly. This tree that fell in the woods is going to provide five rafters, maybe four rafters, which is awesome because we were looking at cutting big logs down to five inch pieces, and I didn't want to do that because you end up with a lot of wood that you have to use for something else. But this is going to be awesome because this tree is not very big around one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, four or five rafters are going to come out of this tree that just fell in their laps a couple days ago. It's awesome. Micah, tell me what's going on. Um, we are bringing the goats inside. Um, Almond had a baby and they had, she had three babies. Um, and we're bringing them inside because we think it's too cold outside for them. And so we're bringing them inside the pool box, but we don't want to put them on without any warm bedding. And so we're putting them with hay. Who usually sleeps over there? Puss and boy. Is he a little confused? Yes. And this is Cashew. Who do you have, Rachel? This is Hazelnut. What about you, Em? This is Pecan. So we had been holding the goats with hot water bottles throughout the day and snuggling them up out in the goat shelter. That worked all day, but I fear that we didn't do it soon enough because the goats were really cold. So we decided we can't let them go overnight with just checking on them once or twice like we did last night. We need, we need to be vigilant all night long. So we're taking shifts. And <laughs> I think, what is this, like Dr. Doolittle's house or something is how I feel. Um, so we brought the goats into the barn. We brought Almond over here into where we usually keep Colson, And she's got some bedding and some food and water. And we're going to 
be able to bring the babies in there and help them nurse throughout the night. And then we have a warm place by the fire to hold the babies with some hot water bottles and hopefully raise their temperatures because goat's temperature needs to be between 101 and 103. And they were down at around between 90, they were at 94 earlier today and um, this evening 96. So we're, it's going up, but not fast enough. So we need to get them warm. Forgot this part. I'm going to put this part back in. <laughs>